Welcome, everybody. We are at Dave's Kitchen in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Chef Jay and I are from the Cleveland area. So anyone joining us for our healthy cooking class, you will be able to see this. We're going international, so hopefully you can uh, see us live here. We are recording this. This is a healthy lifestyle class talking about Thanksgiving. It is uh, November. It is the 7th of November. So it is so important to start thinking about your holiday meal, what you have on your plate. It doesn't necessarily have to be all of the fairs that you normally have. It doesn't need to be the sweet potato casserole, the yams with all the stuff. It can be a lot of different things. It doesn't need to be that green bean casserole with the, um, what is that? The cream of mushroom, the cream of mushroom. and yeah. the onion sauce. <laughs> so right. It doesn't need to be laden with fat and sugar. So we are actually trying to look at lightening it up for those of us that are wanting to get healthier, be more. This year with uh, COVID-19, some of you might be doing kind of a virtual type of dinner. It might be that you're dining alone. This way you don't have to do a big bird. You can do a capon, you can do a Cornish hen. You can do any kind of meat that you want, but you do want to make it special. And it's really important to know what you're doing. So today we're serving, um, we're starting off the meal with nice, green salad so it is bib lettuce it is Swiss chard it is kale it's shredded lettuce it's toasted walnuts and can you tell a little bit about how you prepare the salad keeping it simple and easy for everybody okay i need to tell you but this hi how are you hey everyone i'm shopping right here today picked out some fresh Ran to the kitchen. It was fresh start. Very nice, beautiful. I didn't get stalk because I remember in color in this movie, it said stalk has a lot of value for nutrition. Right. So I kept the stalk up, took the bib lettuce, I made sure I washed all the product because you have to wash the food and bread and dirt. You know? But I need to tell you, I prepared it. I didn't ask you about the green dish that Colleen bought. It looks so beautiful. You guys want to see it? Or oh, yeah, they need to see it so okay. you can show them. And we're preparing it family style. And then what we'll do a little later on is we will take the food to the table after we eat and then show you how to plate it up for portion control. Because it's so important to make sure that you uh, portion your food out. You know, and think about, you know, have an agenda or a goal for, you know, the holidays, all the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, uh, what you want to eat on your plate. So think about just having one serving of all of the things that you really enjoy and not going back for a second. So do you really need the um, extra healthy uh, onion? Uh, Stuffing, you need stuffing and mac and cheese and the roll and the yam casserole. So go in thinking, I'm just going to have one plate. I see mashed potatoes all the time. I see the rolls all the time. I am just going to have turkey and the uh, side dishes and limit, you know, the starches. So let me show you the salad that we uh, put in a nice uh, bowl here today. He did this lovely. It is actually a you know, you got your bib, as Jay said, this is a Swiss chard stem, which is a lot of nutrition. And he just kind of cut almost like celery and put it around the side. Now, if you want to do this where you toss it, or you can chop that Swiss chard uh, stalk up into like dice pieces, and you can actually chop the kale up a little bit finer. But the goal is to make it look pretty and you will see in a little bit what the table setting looks like. I do recommend for time and so you don't stress yourself out is to have your table and your fine china set the night before. So then when you wake up, you wake up with um, a lot of people at the church, have a gratitude journal, get your walk in, drink your water and boil yourself some eggs. And so you can have some um, egg salad or something like that it's so important because 
I know a lot of us medics don't get a lot of help. So, you know, Jay, from your standpoint, you know, a chef is cooking, how does it play to, you know, what it was your adrenaline like when you're in the kitchen and when you're cooking? How can that affect that? Oh my God, for some reason, the mind, it's like a horse race. As soon as you come into the kitchen, the mind, the bell rings. You got to eat all your meat. Now explain what that is. A lot of folks don't know it. Let me explain what meat and pie is. And look it up in French. It's everything in order. That's okay. everything. So when I made my stuff in here, I had a miracle, which is French also. Everything in order. The onions, the celery, the carrots. All of that must be diced. So, so for us that are like small potatoes. You can do that like the night before. Cook. So what you're saying is all of my celery, carrots, yes. onions, any garlic, whatever that needs to be chopped, I can chop that the night before. Or did mention they have all nice celery or cost savings when already cut. If you want to. Okay, right. Some of that is expensive, but if you prepare like Colleen is saying, prepare the night before, go right into it. It's time to, it's not time to consume it. it. It will allow you to be able to prepare your dinner and serve it at the proper time. I know, um, Jeff, a lot of people don't think healthy, don't cook healthy, is because the time, you know, if they're going to be larger, they don't want to screw it up. I don't screw up a turkey, but it's the fact that, you know, you're a new wife, a new mom, and you mm -hmm. decide you want to have everybody in the, in the kitchen. So it's really on time. You know, and the most challenging thing with cooking me, you know, no matter if it's Thanksgiving or not, getting it on the table hot. My husband is just really hot. And, you know, when you got that pressure on, you got to have it hot, you got it the table set, you got a small child, or you got people you tell to come over at 4 o'clock and show up at 2, and they don't want to help, this puts a lot of anxiety yes, on the cooking of the meal. So, Give us a little, you know, 411 how to really um, keep it simple and easy for those of us that really dislike cooking. Working in the restaurant, and, and I need to tell y'all about it, you have to be prepared. So all of your meats are gone. Now, you can't come in and all of a sudden I need to unthaw this and do that. Everything must be in order. The mind must be in order. The body needs to have everything. And even for your kids, I need a list, a grocery list. I need everything prepared. That's what everything is prepared. So, so what we're kind of trying to tell you is it's not always what's on the plate. It's how you prepare your mind and how wow. you prepare yourself yes. getting to the day. So really making sure, A, right now it's the seventh. So part of this class is Let's think about what it is that you want to make. Let's have that conversation exactly. with your fighting. Do you need the big bird? Um, who wants what? Oh, you know, no, do no, you no, need no, the no. macaroni and cheese? Do you need the candy hams? And as a as a wife or a mother or someone that's cooking the meal, you gotta you, you can't please everyone. Right. So I don't know about you, but I always say, you know, please the person that's cooking the meal. Because you're the Pretty one that much. has to do it. So so really make the menu that you know that you are going to be able to prepare well. Not try to, and I'll tell you a story. I was watching, I think I shared today, the food network around the holidays, you know, cooking with you know, all these different chefs. You're like, oh, I can make that pork, whole that pork roast. Well, oh, it was it was a work. I was a rat road, and my mother in law said, "Well, you better try that." I said, oh no, 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 it'll work out fine. It was a it was a gross. And in the recipe, it didn't call for soaking the um, the, the rope that goes around on the grill, right. and it burned up and it fell oh, apart. Wow. So, so it fell apart. I had to put it in the oven, so that put me behind the eight ball because I had all my other stuff in the oven. I had my blend on the stove. Everything was just a mess. So really what I'm saying to you is plan your menu according to what you think you can do. So if you don't think you want to do that, yes, well, if you don't like it, why not do three beans, almond beans, right. or three beans? Right. You don't have to stress out about doing, you know, uh, 
Rebuild COVID sauce. You, you can do. They have wonderful frozen vegetables that have uh, uh, Prince Edward blend. They have carrots and green beans and yellow beans right. that you can just steam up to keep it simple and easy. The bottom line is keeping it healthy is you don't need as many starches and sugars exactly. in your meal that you're looking at. So we are preparing for you. We showed you the salad. That was the first course. Right. Other meals. So you can have half your plate in the salad. And what Chef Jay is, um, or he prepared already, is he did the kale and uh, turkey butts here. So we chopped up the kale nice. We cooked the turkey butts. How'd you cook the turkey butts? What I did was I for at least two hours and they were soft. Okay. And, you know, most people don't want to see a fat piece of animal sitting on the plate. So what I did, I chopped it up. Like you style. Okay. I saw the kill. Oh. Come right back. Okay, this you side. know, you know what happens over these chefs? They don't want to be their camera shy and they don't think that they have a value to a nutrition conversation. So they go off to the side. Right. They're the ones that right. prepared it. I'm right. just the one that did the nutritional brain behind it. Right. And in order to make this all work out, it's a team effort. So I got to get him to say, stop cleaning Let and me. get to helping me prepare and discuss. So we took, so we took the kale here. I want to show it to you. We like a little bit of saute. So if you're in the culture, mustard green, collard green, Swiss chard, all of that goes together. You can saute it, turner green, turner root. And what I did was I cut up some of those turkey butts, okay? Take a look at that, turkey tails. The lady said, they're, they're not turkey butts. She told me that this morning. Turkey tails. I cooked them maybe up two hours at the most until they were real tender. And the product turned out very nice. I put it in this bowl because you can see all the way through to the bottom. A little bit of garlic, a little bit of uh, uh, chicken stock, a little bit of olive oil, and that's all you need. So as we were preparing this, share with us why we picked kale and then the turkey butts and why we're serving um, this as a lighter fare. Kale is high in uh, Vitamin C, vitamin C, calcium, all sorts of good things. That vitamin way. A, it's very nutritional. It holds up the body of the kale. The body of it holds up the eat even every That's when you really eat. So if you haven't tried it, you need to try it. We had an alternative. The alternative today would be we're going to use kale with turkey instead of pinto beans or black beans or Turner greens, mushrooms. And, and we chose the kale because it's a heartier one. Yes. It, it, people might call it bitter, but with the turkey butts that have a little bit of sodium, soften that up and grind it down a bit. But we were talking about that green bean, almond bean, and casserole. casserole, right? And we said, you know, we don't want all of that sodium and all of that food for right. our clients, for telling someone to get healthier. And we're like, let's do something creative and different versus just green bean, almond beans. You guys can do green bean, broccoli. Yes. You can do whatever, yeah. but keep it simple and plain. But we thought for this particular Thanksgiving meal, we give it to you um, a little bit more elegant, special, different. But the bottom line, guys, is keep it as simple for yourself to prepare the meal. Try something different. That's what we're here. Healthy and different. It doesn't have to look like, oh, wow, I don't want that. You know, this is cornbread stuff in here with the bread stuff. Cornbread makes it, here it goes, baked. You know, and Colleen is going to tell you what she was going to do before she saw this. Well, tell I've always happened, wanted Colleen. to make cornbread stuffing, but I never, you know, my family just does bread and the onions and the garlic and the celery saute with the chicken broth and eggs and sage poultry and all that kind of good seasoning. That's how my dad made it. And I thought, oh, I wanted to try something a little different. So what I was going to do is I was going to, Jay's like, okay, we're going to get this cornbread, Aunt Jemima, self-rising, quick, easy. I was going to break up my bread, throw a cup of the cornmeal mixture in there, throw my sauteed onions, carrots that are translucent, and then bake it in the <laughs> oven. And, and when he was baking, I'm like, oh, that's what you're doing. You're making a 
corn, a real cornbread and making a bread stuffing with that. And why we use the Aunt Jemima self rising is it has zero sugar versus exactly. buying cornbread right already prepared. You know, can't keep Jay slowing down. You know, he'll be back here, you know. I'm here. But, um, you know, you really need to look at the sugar. And that's why we did a cornbread stuff. And you could add um, some sausage to that if you yes, wanted you to. So really look at the bread that has some sugar on it. Why do you put the heavy cream? Because we got a liquefier. And the heavy cream doesn't have any sugar in it. And it's already ready. Because if you're going to use milk, guess what would happen? You would add milk to it. Milk is a watered down product, homogenized. Heavy cream is not milk. So it doesn't have any sugar well, what in it. What if I'm dairy restrictive? I don't put I don't put cream. I always just use my chicken broth. I put chicken broth in it. If you're dairy restricted, uh, I would have asked that before you came to the house, and I wouldn't have put anything in it because we couldn't have put egg in it if you were dairy restricted. Right, so you can actually just right. use your chicken broth to get it liquefied exactly. with that. So you don't or need to add more water, but you might want the seasoning, you know, in that way. So really what's nice is taking, you know, myself to learn, you know, different techniques and different cultures. Because did we you all do said, something different. Why did you put that cream in there? <laughs> like Hell's Kitchen, you know? I thought we were using the cream to make a whipping for our uh, apple crisp, which is our we dessert for, for yeah. later that way. So, so now we actually have, we toasted the white bread. So it was almost like your Pepperidge Farm already, but that's highly processed. Right. So what we're doing is we took our white bread, we took out the yeast on them. You could use wheat bread, but actually use real bread. You bake it or buy it or use leftover rolls or something. Save your bread now and you know, crunch it up, put it in a bag, seal it up so you can use it for your stuffing. So what we did is we took the bread, we got that, we cut that up, we sauteed our onions in, mm -hmm. uh, was that butter or olive oil? olive oil? We did olive oil with our onions and our celery and our carrots and garlic and made all that trip, season, poultry rose, season, rosemary, 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 rosemary thyme, stuff. all of that kind yeah. of stuff. So it's all season, and then we blended it all together. You can add eggs. We're going to give you the recipe, guys. And then now we're going to put it back in the oven nice. so it stays hot. Twice baked. So, so you want to get that moisture on, don't you? Yeah, because, okay. you know, we don't want to make it too moist, but we want it to be moist because it's a stuffing. And it's a bread stuff. So we'll put it back in the oven. It'll cook. It. Maybe about... 15 to 20, 25 minutes. It'll be done in about 15 minutes. 15 yeah. minutes. You don't want it too dry. Right. But if you do like a dry crisp, because I have guests at my house that like it crisp, we do have our lovely cranberry relish that we make. Now, guys, I got to show you this because, wow. you know, you can use, my dad used to like the can, but that has 24 grams of sugar. This is just fresh cranberries. Now, what we did is we boil the cranberries in water, right. and then I put all natural cranberry juice. Right. And then we added about two tablespoons of orange marmalade, and then right. we put orange and lemon zest. The orange marmalade gives it a little bit of sweetness, not too much. And then we made a roux with our cornstarch. Now, Jay educated me on cornstarch because, yet again, I told him that I hate cornstarch because it lumps. He's like, well, how are you doing it? I'm like, well, he's like, you got to put the water and use your finger and spin it around to get the lumps. And then as you pour it into the cranberry juice mixture, you turn the temperature down and then use your whisk and pour it in to thicken it up. So this has a lovely glaze because you yes. don't want to, you know, lovely glaze to it for the cornstarch. You don't want guys to use your gelatin to that pig and hooves. You know, don't want to use jello. There's a lot of sugar in that. This is all natural. This has very, very little sugar. If it has any sugar, it is the sugar from the marble. But you might need two grams. We only put two tablespoons for the volume. So you use your cranberry relish, a dollop on that on your stuffing and on your turkey. So if you do, when we're ready to pull out the turkey, a four ounce serving, six ounce serving of your turkey, and then a cup of stuffing, and then you can have as much of your kale and butt mixture as you want, as well as um, in a few minutes, we are going to show you the medley of our squashes. We took an eight 
wash and a water knife to wash. Now, Jake, you can go over here and tell them what you did and how you prepared those washes and how do you a butter wash for the, the folks? Because we wanted to lighten it up instead of the jam casserole and all those candy jams and all that sugar because, you know, you want to stay lively and awake during this, you want to be able to go out and walk with the family. You don't want to sit down. I don't know about if you know this, but heart attacks happen during the holiday season, especially after Thanksgiving because of the trip to pan and all that kind of stuff. So you have this acorn squash, right? This whole squash. And what did you do to it? Here we go. We got the acorn squash. You don't even have to kill it. They won't. Because it has body. And it is a squash. Like, uh, Yellow squash, but it's more of an egg. And uh, I asked somebody, can you eat egg? They told me they never know. I'm going to Google it to find out. World. So why shouldn't we be able to So here's what I did I took the egg squash and I baked it even. First, we cut it in half, right? We cut it in four. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. cut it in spoon, right. and we took the seeds. And we took the seeds. Okay. Out. We baked it. But we kept them because they're like pumpkin seeds. Yeah, we seeds. Look, guys, right. have the seeds. Look, guys, cut the seeds. On the seeds. Cut okay. the seeds. You can eat the seeds. Now, oh, very crisp. We oh, got so one acorn squash. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces, nine servings per plate. So if you had a family of 10, there you go, right here. Okay? I Show it to them, Kelly. Yeah, so that's right. nice. So we're going to, we have this, we have acorn and butternut. So. You can have a boat of each. So this really, if you think about it, this is another starch. Yes, it is. So, you know, because the squashes is a vegetable starch combination. So that's why when you're eating and you have corn and carrots, they are a sweeter vegetable, have more sugar in them. So that's why you're wondering why, ladies and gentlemen, you're gaining weight, because you might be having your potato and corn, saying the corn's a vegetable. Or your potato and your acorn or your butternut squash. Those are still starches, but it, the, the squashes are in the vegetable varietals, but it's a combination. So, oh, so what do you, I'm getting the casserole. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. That's my lovely assistant. So, <laughs> so what we really want to watch is what we're pairing our meal with, what's on our plate. So you can be having a lot of starches and sugar, sugar and if you don't move more, we're going to gain weight, our sugar level is going to be up, and we are going to have a pre-diabetic condition. Now, guys, those of you that are on glucophage or are pre-diabetic or diabetic, I am here to tell you that as a nutritionist working with the chef, that you can get off the glucophage by changing your diet. Exactly. By looking at eating smaller meals, getting off of processed foods, and that's what Chef Jay and I are offering to each and every one of you. Class situation, educating you. You know, a lot of people think, well, you guys are probably pretty expensive. Well, what's your health? Needs? How much do you want to be on these pills when your body doesn't recognize it? It recognizes squash, tomatoes, Swiss chard, kale. It's just getting in a different habit or a different routine. So it's just like this holiday menu. It's deciding right now today that I am going Excuse to me. change my menu just a little bit. One small thing. So don't serve the rolls or don't do the mashed potatoes because I see those all the time. Let's not maybe do this big candy ham. Maybe just do a fresh sweet potato with cinnamon and nutmeg and not all of the goo and stuff. So we're here to kind of guide you to help you on those areas. So looks like Jay got the uh, butternut squash. Right. All uh, He's gonna put very little bit of honey on that. This Rizzle. is all natural honey from actually the Cleveland area. A friend of mine from Brexville grows the honey. So if you're looking for someone to buy honey from, it's local. Let me know. We're putting the pumpkin seeds on them. Oh, we had a little bit of parsley. So look how beautiful that is. And you can each have one piece of your butternut and one piece of your acorn squash. 
we're going to actually plate this up for you, take it to our lovely table. So you start family style and then you serve yourself, but we're going to talk about portion control because it's so important. Many of you may be going to two or three houses, maybe not this year, but that's what traditionally it has been. So you have to decide where lunch is going to be and where dinner is going to be. And it goes back to waking up with that attitude of gratitude and knowing what it is that you want to do for the day. Exactly. What's your first meal going to be? Are you going to take a walk with the family? Are you going to make their big meal the lunchtime meal? Are you going to make your later evening meal be just the, the turkey or something that you didn't have? Stick with the protein and the vegetables and maybe a small piece of pie. But you can't have everything. What typically people do, and I do it myself because I've been, you know, dieting, eating people for over 30 years and all the eating, basically because of my own health journey and because I wanted to get well, but I never did it well. So I'm learning day to day and making those small steps. So, you know, food is, um, your body's a temple and food is fuel, but a lot of times it's emotion around the people. So you have to really ask yourself, what is it that I want from this, this environment? What is it that I want? Am I upset and I'm going to have a pumpkin roll or something like that? So you, you start the day with a smoothie or a yogurt, plain yogurt or a couple of hard boiled eggs. Then you can go into the lunch meal and just have a turkey, a salad, and butternut squash. Um, here's these lovely boats of your acorn squash, which are lovely. And we're going to throw a little pumpkin seeds on those. And we're throwing the parsley. It's all about plate presentation, everybody. I know the family doesn't necessarily think about it that way. And as you're cooking, that might be one of the reasons why you don't like to cook is they butcher the heck out of your presentation. So it kind of makes you upset. But you right. got to get over that piece and right. just know that you right. create it's love all your food and how they eat it is up to them and you gotta yeah. let that go so so we have a lo lovely array of different different foods everybody uh, check in on our time we have an hour in this class and we got a lot of things so jay how's the turkey coming? the turkey is real good we're gonna take this cinnamon stick we're gonna zest it and braid it a little bit and we're going to put that on top of our, what do we put that on top of? We can on top of our top apple of crisp your or apple pumpkin. Your apple crisp, or you can put it on top of your squashes. I mean, cinnamon, you can put it on top you of gotta your salad. you got to taste this. We're going to taste that. Let the people see what that tastes like. Oh, that is so good. Awesome. Wow. No, you don't even need sugar There's with that There's so product. many good nutrients in your squashes. That's why this time of year is harvest season. So you need to eat seasonal berries. That's why we wait any problem. Because we still try to have the berries which are sweeter and they're coming from, you know, not the United States. So we don't know exactly where they're coming from. And Jay pointed out to me about when you cut an apple about the seeds and it might be organically modified. And that means that they manipulated the apples or the berries to make them be readily for us. So when we're when I tell people, are you eating enough variety of fruits and vegetables? They say yes, but they are not getting the same. They're not as nutrient dense as it was 30 years ago. So the kale and the spinach and the broccoli and the Swiss chard, you have to have not just a cup, but four cups right. to get the same nutrition. So what people are doing is going to isolated vitamin sources. And saying, I don't think I eat well, but I get, I take a multivitamin that's over the counter, which is synthesized. And we don't know where those come from either. Are they coming from China? Where they're manufactured? Because, guys, there is no regulation on our vitamins. They can be sitting up in a manufacturing house. That's why, as a nutritionist, someone that studies nutrition, I look at the research behind any of the products. Any of the farms, I would rather do farm to table. So I partnered with a company called Juice Plus, which is fruits and vegetables in a capsule and a chew for the kids. So it's all about helping families get healthy. 
as well as a hydroponic gardening system. So wow. we are all about wow. Chef Day and I wow. about kind of guiding you and teaching you how to get well, but making sure you're not only getting your mind right, but also actually getting your body with the right food sources from natural farm to table, from natural nutrition. The juice plus products are just, you know, fruits picked at their peak, juice, the sugar, the salt's taken out of it and put it in a capsule. If you want to learn more about that and our coaching, please message me after this particular class. Chef Jay and I create and meal and menu plans specifically for you for your specific dietary needs, whether you're diabetic. And this is a process, guys. It is patience because our habits, you don't want to have to be restricted during this holiday season. I'm not saying be restrictive on where. You know, try right. some things new. We're all about eating healthy, living, clean, and drinking tea. Talk about the table of pairing this with some nice wine spirits too. So we want to make sure you're enjoying the holiday, but also keeping in mind your health. So it does take time to prepare. You know, you have this cornbread. So actually, you know, I was just thinking about this, Jeff Day, and I need to think about um what what we're considering is a cornbread could actually be instead of a bowl. Oh. With your salad. Yes. So if you have company that's like, oh, mom, where's the rolls? Where's the, where's the crescents? You know, where's the, you can say, you know what, guys, we changed something up. We're serving cornbread today with our meals. This could be actually eaten as an appetizer with our lovely bit of salad that I showed you earlier. Yes. Or you could have it as a dessert with your apple. Hello. You can have it with your meal, and you can use it get stuffing. And some people say, I'm not stuff. Right. I want some bread. I don't want it red. I don't care. I want some bread. Do you have any bread? You can offer, well, I do have some bread. I don't have white bread with yeast in it. I have corn bread that's been cooked. It's very nutritious. It has some sugar in it. it helps with the test and makes it food. Corn has to come out. You notice it comes out. Eat a whole, it comes out. Of it. But it helps your intestines to move so that. Yeah. So cornmeal is a good thing, okay? you right. got to remember, you know, the amount of fiber. So this is a very a lighter. You're going to feel more energized with this meal. You're not going to feel as right. tired. And your body needs to work. It needs to chew. It needs to absorb the nutrients. And when you're doing all that high sugar, high fat, traditional Thanksgiving, you're not allowing your digestive tract to work. You're not getting the fiber from your fruits and your vegetables and right. things like that. So you're constipating. Let's be, you know. So when you say, "Oh, I'm bound up," there's reasons why you're bound up. You're bound up because you're not getting any. You might be drinking the water, but you're not getting any fiber to scrub brush the intestines to help eliminate your bowel and help right. eliminate. And stuff. So it's really important to not go with the mucilage or the fiber one capsule, but to actually get it from whole food. And that's what you can get when you're eating the, the skins of the apple and you're eating the more vegetables, your broccoli, your kale, your green beans. You don't need all that extra. You don't need, you don't need all that wheat bread products and say you need fiber from your cereals. Well, then they're loaded with food. Lycophosphate, which is not good for the intestines. Chemical. Want that other platter? Drop platter? Right behind you. Oh, we got the bed. Sorry, we're right. talking. You know. I want to go back with Holly because I'm all over the place and I'm moving, and that's what happens in the kitchen. The ARPA, the ARPA, these are the final stages of the final product. And most products that take longer, like bird, bird could have been in the oven last night and could have been in the oven, whatever. Because we got here a little early. Bird, we will show you the bird. We will not cut the bird, but we'll show you and tell you from the bird. Eileen will take the bird to her family. Then she'll show you, tell you how to car and cut the bird. Okay? Because we're not going to introduce any product that's not presentable to the public. Okay? There are plates here. But I want to tell you what happened. How long have we been doing? Six years. Six years. In six years, we've been like this here. 
you know, and she's been watching me and I've been watching her and I didn't know how healthy I was or was not. And I am pretty healthy. Went to the doctor, they did my sugar yesterday. Bang, blood pressure. Uh, what was it? 100 over 72, always proper all my life. Uh, heart rate, she said you can breathe. She said with the COPD, I haven't smoked in four years. I don't smoke. Let me tell you something, the cholesterol. So now I'm going, I did a prostate, they found two products. They removed. But that's after 10 years, okay? 10 years of recovery. Then I go to the doctor and uh, come to find out I have a bladder infection. Now, bladder infection, a lack of water or anything, you can, it, it's bacteria somehow. Anyway, it took care of that. Now I'm going to prostate to see if I prostate swole, and she said it wasn't. So listen, I found out my iron was low. I also found out that Colleen came to my life. How long did you come over to my apartment? Like three weeks ago. We started three weeks ago, I went from 270 pounds in three weeks to 257 pounds. Yeah, I mean, it, it just is that conversation of educating him on processed foods, what he was, what he was not eating. Because he would wake up and just go to cook, go somewhere, and it's all about the balance. It's 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 a lifestyle balance. It's not about all the big guys. It's you know it, it's it's planning. It's thinking about things. It's having a, a the right attitude about your life and taking time to say, what do I want to eat? Where am I going today? And that's why step one in this healthy lifestyle class is sitting down and preparing the menu. That's the first step. What is it that I want to eat? And I want you to go through and write down all the food that you want to eat every single, like for this meal. So you want the macaroni and cheese, you want the bread stuff, you want the rolls, you want the mashed potatoes, you want the ham, you want the turkey, you want the green bean casserole, you want the sweet potato casserole, want a pumpkin pie, want a, I mean, just go list it. Now I want you, after you got it all down, now I want you to count how many starches are. And I want you to limit it by three. So I want you to go through that menu and say, what really do I see all the time? Which I always said, it's the mashed potatoes I can make anytime. I can have a roll anytime. Because Jay Hunt Bakery doesn't make rolls anymore. And no, they were the best on rolls yes, ever. Were. I would have three or four of those and the mashed potatoes because if you warm those up and they had this crusty, like, oh my God. Oh my God. But for those of you that don't remember, I won't even, I won't even tantalize you. But, but the fact is that I was always looking every Thanksgiving for the Huff Bakery roll. Right. Even if you, Jay, would bring the basic homemade rolls, I oh have God. one and I'd be like, oh, where, where's that Huff Bakery taste? So one where wasn't is enough, I'd get two. And that was way too many starts. So what I'm saying is, Mix the rolls up. Don't do the mashed potatoes. Light up green bean casserole. Maybe do a green beans almond bean. Maybe switch it up to what we're serving, the kale and the, the turkey buns. Do something different. Maybe serve just uh, carrots and green beans and yellow beans. You know, so really when you do, you need the macaroni and cheese. Maybe, oh, Aunt Sophie makes the best macaroni and cheese and she's bringing it. Okay, we'll have that and that be your starch and then have the stuffing later on. If you don't like stuffing, guys, why are you putting it on your plate? Wow. Makes sense so to please, me, Colleen. So please, the guy next to you. Right. And then you're upset and you're feeling shameful. This meal is not supposed to be about your shame. Let's look at the history of coming together around the table. Um, way back when the, the Indians yes. wanted to share, and you know, this is a time you want to come together with family over food and discuss, life. Um, yeah. you know, discuss what we yeah. haven't talked about, leave politics aside. Are but, you grateful? Do you have any gratitude just being here? Is it all about eating or is it all about Thanksgiving? And it's all about how you're blessed. I mean, regardless of where you are on um, social. Um, there's so many lessons we're in a country that's free. We can still talk. We can still yes. worship. 
So, yes. you know, really, let's be blessed that we have two legs, two feet, two hands. We can share our grace with someone else. And, you know, Jay, help me with this Bible verse here. You know, let's look about, you know, isn't it the, uh, get it to you? You know, there was a time in my life where, you know, I, I really want you guys to understand when it's hopeless, hopeless induces change to the next of the mind, induces paranoia, suicide, hopeless and dominant uh, return. Yet, thank God to sponsorship, thank God to people connected to the people that are not hopeless, that has been in such peril, that they from the brink of destruction. That's what living in all sustainable all about us. All about what even why would you eat if you're not feeling it? Are you just eating because you're depressed? Are you eating because you made your bad last night? Why? Wow, it's upset me. I, I need to go get me a big pot of possibility with all the scampies of five or six pounds and then in an hour or two, I need to go get me some Pig feet and neck bones, and then later on at 11 o'clock, I'm going to eat those leftover ribs I had in the refrigerator for three days. Bang! Well, they might not even be that to you. It might be the time to press them, going to drive to Taco Bell or get a Whopper Jr. <laughs> or a hamburger. And 25 years ago, those were real meat, real food. Right. You know, it's not real food. It's it's soy based, processed garbage. Exactly. It's not that unless you're going to a you know, a diner or you're going somewhere that's nice that you know they're padding burgers, you don't know really what's in the food. So it doesn't have to be going in the fridge. It could be just a, your habit of, of all of a sudden you just are ending up in a drive through right. any drive through because you A, need to get out of the house, so you're driving through. So, you know, why I started Sustain Well is because I want to help men and women take what is weighing on their mind and their hearts and help free them from that weight. Exactly. You know, and I struggled with my weight for 30 years, but I've come to learn day by day, step by step, how to manage that. And I don't always do it well. I mean, Halloween, I did have some chocolate, but it gets better and better every single time and I learn tips and tricks and that's what I bring to the table that's different to everybody else. So that's why we're doing this healthy lifestyle holiday class because I am blessed to be able to learn my slow depression and anxiety to food for emotion to share that with you to get you all out of problems with the processed food and the sugar because sugar is another drug sugar is addicting and we need to get away so that's what i'm passionate about that's why i really do what i do that's why i'm really um, passionate about helping all of you get healthy so it really is my ministry to help you also really you know find us get a class do what you need to take i want to show you the apple crisp. This is the apple um, slurry. It's like an apple pie. We fill the honey crisp apple. We dice them up. We put a little lemon juice, cinnamon, pumpkin pie spice, and um, we did a starch. You know, Bay Jay did it very quickly. You know, so it can be done. But you can do it like a pie where you can put your apple crisp, your oats, which I'll give you the recipe on the bottom, and then layer. Uh, apple dice with tomato, your cinnamon is cinnamon, pumpkin uh, pie, pie slice, and then put the uh, granola on top of it, bake it in the oven. So, however, you do the apple crisp, it's a lighter fare. We didn't add sugar at all, maybe a little honey to it, but that is your dessert. And give up some topping on it. Could you talk about the zest? I did not, but glad you reminded me. You know, if you want to have that zest, because the skin, we peel away, 
is the best. So people are afraid to wash off that orange, that lemon, and zest it in your food, in your salad, and anything because it has all of the oils and the good nutrition and the vitamins and nutrients that your body needs. Let's go back to those isolated vitamins. God created us to eat real food, so why are we discounting that and putting things in our body? So, you know, really we want to come around the table and really share, you know, good quality of food with everybody. And we want to be able to please up. Now, what's nice about the meal that we created is we can do it. Um, it's kind of more, but if you don't, if you're a vegetarian, you can eat all, which is really great. So, um, so Jay, talk to the audience. So I get some plates. I want to talk to you up. guys too because Colleen, let me tell you, thank God, people, thank God for her. Just thank God for a whole lot. If you don't believe in God, thank a higher power. But here's what we're talking about. We're talking about association. You know, we're talking at the table, not being embarrassed, not putting off. Now, little Billy, you know, when I was growing up, I weighed 296 pounds in sixth grade. My titties were hanging down here. Got into seventh grade, and the boys let me know that you're looking like a little girl, Jay. And they're teasing me, and they're taunting me, and I need to get rid of this somehow. And I meet my father, my uncle who played pro football for the Minnesota Vikings. I come to find out that I need to become active. My mother helped me by starting me with the diet. No certain times to eat. I became a lot active. Colleen comes, and we're able to sit at the table and talk about life. life. Are you sustained? Is your mental place where, guess what? I'm not eating just to be eating. I know what I'm putting to the temple. But, but this is, I took this salad, I showed you the, you know, the bowl of salad. What we were going to do is we're plating it up. This should be what you're eating first. Slow it down, chew. I've always been told chew 30 times so it can digest. You know, all of the flavor is on your tongue and your chewing process. And then the back of the tongue is where you get the high flavor. So wow. once it gets to the stomach, you're really done. Wow. So really the first three to four bites is where you're getting all of your flavor, your senses. So if you're just inhaling your food, you're not tasting. Exactly. So whether you have this salad in the morning, I mean, at first, or you have it after some of your peas, either your salad after. So either way, you know, make a salad. So yeah, either way. Okay, I'm going to put this over on her. Go for it, Sammy. She got the best chef in town. Here. The best chef right here. And I want to thank her for coming. Because let me tell you something. I had lost weight. I had lost 40 pounds. And I went from 40 pounds from July to August. I went to 270. I gained 30 pounds back real fast and, and a little bit more. So when she came and came over, we shot a video, talk, the politics, but most of us are about how we change our lifestyle. How can Jay, as a chef, change his lifestyle? Because you know what? Whatever you were before, if you just sit back and relax, it would be that once again. No. There's Jay. He don't even want to cook now. You hear me? So anyway. Colleen's going to show you all the food. She's going to make the presentation happen for you. Going to get her a pair of tongs for the, for the. I want to talk about, too, um, our pairing of our, our wine today. I selected okay. from Down Cellar a okay. nice uh, couple of two reds and two whites for our, our presentation. Scout and Cellar crafted wine, low in sugar, and it is, I selected the Pinot Noir, the residue. Noir and the Asapardo Tempranillo wine. It's a 2019 and it is a fruity, bold, nice black cherry, uh, plum, hey, a little bit of tobacco seasoning, and it uh, goes well with this particular holiday meal. So that's one. Uh, a Tempranillo is a varietal from Spain. It's very good. We also are showing a um, the uh, resident Pinot Noir, 
which is, I like Pinot Noir because this is 100% Pinot and it is, uh, alcohol is 13.3.5 grams per liter of sugar. So it's very low in sugar. So we're talking about eating healthy and living clean. This is a great way to definitely keep your sugar low and, and good and you can still have your spirit. So this is an earthy light, this resident Pinot Noir here. And it is um, bright and it has a little bit of tart cherry, cranberry, um, orange peel, and a balance with a little bit of, of spices. And it has a nice smooth finish. So it's great with roasted turkey, roasted chickens. So that's why I picked this particular one to go to your, your residents or your people that are coming. Want, um, some want red, some want white. So that's why I went with that. Now we have our our Chafico Pinot Grigio here, and that's a 2019. It is a fruity, crisp, lemon peel, and peach, and a little bit of sea salt, so that is awesome. Chafico is Italian for how cool. So we all wanna be cool this holiday season, so you wanna definitely pair this. It's great with our fresh vegetables, our kale, and salad. We're, we're talking about. And a Pinot Grigio is the same grape that is a different style. A Pinot Grigio is very typical, bold, very viscous, and it's very, very good. So Scout and Cellar is, they pick from farmers that really love their grapes and things like that. And then we're doing the Fiddle Neck uh, Sauvignon Blanc here. The Fiddle Neck Sauvignon Blanc is an earthy crisp, lemon mango and key lime. So it's a very fruity dish and it is really good with our chicken and our seafood. It's very good with poultry. So the juice of the is it's made in California for over 150 years and the vineyards are still family owned. So I got the cellar because it's cleaner, low in sugar. This Savon Blanc actually is 0 0.05 grams of sugar. It retails at $24. So if you really want to bring a variety of beverages and wines from whites to reds, you can definitely go to the Scout and Cellar website, www.scoutandcellar.com backslash sustainable, and get your wine for the holidays. And if you want me to help you pair certain different wines for this holiday, let me know. I will definitely be helping you get your reds and your whites. And they do have a nice little holiday set. So I'm just pleased that I'm able to give you all really, really great um, nutrition today with the food and the wine, because we do have guests that like to enjoy their beverages, but you gotta remember what is in the bottle. There was a lot of sugar in the bottle. It's, it's um, filtered through um, fish albumin and things like that. So you have to really make sure you know what you're putting in your body. When I'm talking clean, you know that you're not going to get um, allergy or feel like crap when you wake up when you're drinking a glass of wine because it's just pure grape. So that's why we do the Scout and Cellar. So let me show you. I'm going to plate up the food. I'm going to have the, we're going to have our, kind of fix our tongs here. So I am going to share with you. We're going to have our apple plates and vegetables. So you can actually put your salad on your plate. So this is lovely. Look how nice this table is set. We got our wine glasses. We got our center plate here. I got a great spoon so we can. Uh, Now I'm going to have, now we're going to come over here and we have, I'm going to have my acorn squash. Oh, this is very, this is very, and uh, I'm going to have a little bit of my starch and have a little bit of chocolate. Look how nice the stuff we make the crisp on the top. I'm going to put this plate right on my table, and there is what our table presentation looks like, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to show you how lovely the stuffing looks. Nice, as I said, crisp on the top, nice and moist on the inside, 
So that is awesome. I'm going to put it back on our serving table, which is our counter here at Dave's. Since we are pretty much done in the kitchen, I'm going to flip around. Oh, we got to do. Oh, no, go ahead. Flip around. Cool. All right, we're going to flip around our thing so you can see the table. All right, let me see here. You guys can see me. All right, so here is our lovely table. See that there? Oh, put that right here and put this down here so you can see the table. Oh, here we go. Now you can see the table. We got our cans, light vinaigrette dressing, and I chose that because it has less sugar, you can do a teaspoon of that, basically. Um, maybe what we'll do is we'll just keep this up like this. I can tip this down. And we can see the table this way. Oh, good. All right, look, we got our lovely table here with our, our setting. We have the Ken's dressing, which is nice. I like Ken's because it is simple and easy. We don't have to make a vinaigrette. We want to really keep it simple. So guys, this actually is ingredients. It has distilled vinegar, water, a little bit of sugar, vegetable oil, and some different things. It has um, seven grams of carbohydrates. Um, and let me just check. It has seven grams of sugar, but this is for a two tablespoons. So you can have one tablespoon and then you're only having less. So that's really important that way. So actually, we have our lovely and Mary sauce here. So we can put that actually on our, our stuffing. And really, this is a nice vegetarian dish right here. I have squashes, I have my tomato and my turkey butts, and my stuffing. So really, vegetarian, we have that. I know when you were on our webinar right now, we had the um, heavy cooking, of course, but uh, that is something. Now, what I want to do is uh, I want to show you over here. I can bring it to this little small plate. Our desserts. We have our lovely apple crisp here. So I'm just going to scoop out a little bit of apple crisp. We are good there. So look how the apple crisp is. So we have the apple crisp as our dessert. And actually, what we can do is we can come over here and help ourselves if we choose to and have some corn bars. So there basically is our, our meal. We have our, our wine selection for South and Cellar, brown fish, dairy, golden sugar. Each of the, the bottles that, that I shared with you, the two reds, um, Tempranillo, the Asaparta, zero grams of sugar. So um, the resident has 0.5 grams of sugar. The Chico Pino Pino has 2.5 grams of sugar, where most uh, white do have a little bit of sugar. Um, the salad is 0.5. So, so really, guys, when you're thinking about eating um, if you want to look at how much fat and sugar and starch is in your diet, we really are getting the most sugar from our head dress. So let's add it up, everybody. Let's do sugar in our salad dressing. Let's do grams. Let's do a 0.5 grams of less than one. 3.5 grams of sugar. We have um, probably less than one gram of sugar. We'll say one gram of sugar in our cranberry sauce. Yes. Now we're going to do five All right. We don't really have any sugar. Oh, a little bit of Let's call our stuffing one gram of sugar. Like 5.5 grams of sugar. For, for just fun. And then we have four bread, add another one. We add a little bit of honey. So this whole meal is under 10 grams of sugar. So that is compared to probably sugar in the background and calories that you're getting from traditional candy, potatoes, potato pie, um, all of those, uh, your stuffing, your gravy, mashed potatoes, your rolls, the bread, your uh, butter, you put on your rolls. So, I mean, let's do a caloric count. And most traditional Thanksgiving meals, guys, you know, let me just pull myself up here and see a minute. 
turn it a little bit. Bring myself so you can see me. All right, I think we're good. I'll move back. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll bring this down. I don't know why you can't see me, but. Oh, there we go. Anyways, you guys. So let's talk calories for this particular week. Now that I'm all about calories, but I'm all about giving you, making this meal nutritionally dense and eating well, basically. So that's what um, we're talking about. So let's see. So four ounces of turkey, okay? That's probably 70 you know, calories. Um, so maybe you have 250, 300 calories of turkey. Your stuffing for one cup of stuffing because your bread is about 80 calories. So we're talking 160. So we got three, let's say 400 just for our stuffing and turkey. Now I was talking about our um, kale. Zero for turkey butts, let's say, are 45. So we're about 450. The salad has no calories. The walnuts have a fat serving. So maybe we have another, you know, 45 calories. So really, this particular meal, I would kind of guess it because I don't know, it's probably less than 750 calories. Wanting to watch your weight, 3,500 calories right. to pound the fat. Right. So you don't want your meal to be 3,500, you know, calories, basically. Right. Right. You want it to be, you know, lower in the core intake. So if you're thinking about the whole day, you know, you want to keep your core intake to 2,200 for a male, maybe 1,600 for a male. But this is a day you don't want to limit your calories, but you don't want to go with excess. Because mm -hmm. you got to remember, this is only one day. you got Friday, Saturday, and Sunday around the family. Mm -hmm. So you really have to make sure you're, you're compensating for that. So you want to keep your breakfast maybe at about eight. This particular meal, the uh, Thanksgiving meal, is probably about, let's give it, you know, 650, 700. And then your evening meal, because you still want to eat something in the evening, you want to keep that probably about, you know, three, four hundred. So let's make it simple 100 at breakfast, you know, 600 at lunch, 650, you got 750, and then another seven or eight figures for your dinner. So there you have it, about 22. 100 calories that's your age and so that's kind of what your thanksgiving player should look like guys if you enjoy your thanksgiving if you're looking for to light it up find us facebook jay what time is it little after 11 all right class is dismissed everybody thanks find us on facebook at sustainable.com find me on social and chef jay we're here to help you light up your pleasure i'll keep each other down thanks for joining us have a great day